today we are running our Zotero workshop as part of the situational analysis uh, activity. And this workshop will be led by Agnes. She's an information and data librarian at the University of Waterloo with support from Timothy that will make sure that everything will run well during this training. And yes, it's good to see everyone again and I'll pass the word to Agnes. Morning, everyone. Uh, I actually want to introduce uh, Tim, who is our um, uh, librarian uh, for psychology and anthropology, and he's an expert in uh, 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 reference management uh, software. So that's why we're doing it to today together. Because without him, I I probably I wouldn't do be able to do it. And uh, as Anna Carolina mentioned, I am a, a, a liaison librarian for Faculty of Environment. That's why um, she contacted me to to conduct this workshop. And uh, um, uh, we are so happy to have you here and excited to present to you. Uh, the recording will be uh, uh, later distributed for anyone who would like to um, review what we've done today. Uh, today we are going to present and give you time to, part, uh, to participate, to try it. And we hope that uh, as we asked uh, um, a few days ago that you already uh, downloaded Zotero. Uh, but if not, uh, you will have a chance to do it. Um, so um, without uh, further ado, Tim, could you take over for now? And then we'll, 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 we'll start. Certainly. So welcome to the Zotero training. My name is Tim Ireland. The University of Waterloo acknowledges that much, most uh, <laughs> that much of our work takes place on the traditional territory of the neutral, Anishabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Our main campus is situated on the Haldeman Track, the land promised the six nations that include six miles on either side of the Grand River. So I was initially going to open this up and say, what do you want to be able to do after this session? And then I found out that there are a lot of you. So what we're going to be doing is kind of running with our initial idea. So, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at why we need the desktop and online Zotero, how to add citations into our Zotero database using a couple of different methods. And during that time period, I'm going to be asking you guys if there's other methods of bringing citations in or other databases that you'd like to use, and we can take a look at that. We're going to look at sharing libraries and working with Zotero online, and we're going to use Word to insert citations into a document and then editing references. So is there anything else besides that that we want to be looking at today? I'll just give you guys a couple of minutes to pop stuff into chat in case there is. And while people are writing their ideas, I just want to mention that uh, for, a reminder for us to keep us our video uh, off and also our microphone on mute. And I can't see the chat if someone could help me out with that. Yes, I can help. I got a message so far. Hello, thanks for the training. OK. I am going to presume, I assume, that what we have set out in the outline will meet our current needs and we're going to continue. So the idea of this session is ask questions. If, you, if we tell you, you'll probably forget. If we teach you, hopefully you'll remember. What we want to do is involve you as much as possible so that you learn. Our preference for this training would be in a big room and a computer lab but I hear that you are all over the world and well, that's just not feasible at this point in time. Instead, if we start going too fast and I can start talking really, really fast and you guys will get nothing out of it. If I start going too fast, throw something to the chat, ask me to repeat it. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do material or to do processes in Zotero. If something doesn't work for you, let's make sure you find a process that works at the end of the day. So I would like you to, in the chat, say either yes, 
you can call me on stuff if I go too fast or no. I'm expecting most people to reply to this. So yes, I'm, I can ask him questions. I feel comfortable doing that or no, I cannot. So Tim, uh, someone is saying that they are unable to hear the voice, please help. Hmm. So I would say um, sign out and try again. Yeah, Log uh, into do you end. want to reply to that chat? Because obviously they're not going to be able to hear us. Oh so. yeah, okay. Anna, do you have any other Zotero trouble, or uh, Zotero? Zoom troubleshooting hints you might be able to give that person? I'd say try to increase the volume, check if you have any headsets on or not. And yes, maybe signing out and coming back is a good idea as well. I don't see anybody else replying. I need to know whether or not you guys feel comfortable asking me questions, which would be a yes in the chat, or you do not feel comfortable asking me questions, which would be a no in the chat. Yes to Tim, people are still replying. Yeah, yeah, people are saying yes and okay. We're good. How many yeah. responses have we gotten back, Agnes? Oh, a lot. It's hard. Yeah, I'm not going to count them. Quite a number. We're good then. Okay. Yes. I can't see you. So it's it's really hard to judge a session like this. So there's our contact information. And I believe Anna can make this available to you guys if you don't already have the slides. We are going to be starting at Zotero.org. And now I'm going to be doing some screen shuffling. So forgive me if I lose you for a second. So I am going to be opening up a browser. and taking it to Zotero.org. Do you see my Zotero account, Agnes? Yes, I do. But do you want to go to the uh, generic page? So this is what you'll see at Zotero.org. And I am now in my account because I've logged in up here. So I will give you a moment and you can, uh, those of you who want to um, do it as we do it uh, and practice along uh, as we are uh, showing you where to go and what to do. Um, if you could go to Zotero.org. And if you don't have it, the download is right in the middle of the screen. Can you indicate in the chat if you're currently doing the download? Or whether or not we can continue. So I need either download or continue in the chat, please. Continue. People are responding to continue. Excellent. That's really why I wanted to hear. And, and that they already downloaded. That's definitely why I wanted to hear. Okay, so I'm going to hop into my web library, which is my online version of Zotero. So it's showing in my library, I already have these items in it. Um, I'm now going to open up my Zotero desktop. So this is my Zotero desktop. Can you see my Zotero desktop, Agnes? Yes, I can see your Zotero desktop. We should also mention that because we practice and we, um, um, in preparation of the session, we have some items in our Zotero library. Those of you who uh, never placed anything, uh, your Zotero library should be blank. Okay, so what I want to do is start a new collection and I'm going to call it training and just for fun, we'll call it February 10th. I'm going to say, okay. That now appears here as a new collection. Items will always be in the, my library. And I can also have sub collections. 
So I've got my February 10th collection here. Okay. And looking at my online Zotero, I see my training February 10th is also appearing here. If it okay. doesn't for you, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't for you, there's a sync button on the top right, and that will kind of force the system to sync itself. Yes, Agnes. Bef uh, before, because we you already opened a uh, web version and uh, desktop version, could you uh, explain a bit why we are doing it and why do you need both? Okay, so Unless this, you is, this is my desktop version. When I'm citing material into Word, this is the version that I'm going to be doing it from. The online version is backed up and it will allow me to do the searching in the various databases and in, move material into my Zotero account. The two of them work beautifully in sync with one another. Are there any other questions on that? Also, um, when we show you later how you can set up groups and that's probably what you are going to do when you are working in the subgroups on the different projects or maybe different papers uh this is what you are going to uh to do in your web web version if or since agnes and i are both in the uw library group I can move one of my items into that library and then Agnes would have access to it versus this area at the top here is what I have exclusive access to. Agnes would not see this material, but she wouldn't see the material that's shared amongst the groups. Are we clear on that? Anyone has any questions about uh, using a uh, desktop version versus uh, online version? Yeah, people are commenting that it makes sense. Good. If you have questions later or during, please continue this and please ask them. So I think what we want to do now is bring material into our Zotero accounts. So I already have a PDF on my computer. And I'm just going to move some stuff around on one of my other screens. So as you can imagine in a, um, I don't know if you are familiar with other uh, citation software, there are all kinds of different ways of bringing material into Zotero. And uh, since we have some experience with uh, uh, other citation software, uh, for example, Tim is our expert and uh, administrator for RefWorks. So, um, and that's the um, uh, software University of Waterloo um, subscribes to. Um, we discovered that Zotero is really easy to, um, to add articles, books, whatever you feel like to, uh, uh, to the uh, library. Um, we were surprised how easy it was, to be honest. Go okay, ahead, so I'm on the desktop version of Zotero here, and I have a PDF on my desktop, so I'm grabbing it, so I'm pushing, holding, and dragging, and dropping. So what it's doing is harvesting some of the metadata for it, and now it's appearing in my account. And that is how easy it is to add material in. If I click under it, I would open it up. Are there any questions about that? I have a question about that. Once you do that, do you already have the citation ready, title, author's year, or you have to add that? What I found is citation software, RefWorks, Zotero, Mendeley, EndNote, is okay at harvesting the citation information. It's not 100% I've found. So what I would do is if I was actually going to be using this in my paper, I would find the citation information in a database, bring in the database and then merge the two records of the PDF and the citation. Sometimes it does it beautifully, but I'm finding it's not 100% and that is what I would suggest you do. 
Is that fair? Yes, thank you. I still need to learn how to do that. Too. <laughs> and also, um, what, sorry, go ahead. what Tim said, uh, this speaks to every everything what you uh, place into your uh, citation software. So it's not only when you uh, drag and drop uh, PDFs, but also if you bring something from the library catalog, if you bring something from a uh, database, it's, um, it's in your best interest to uh, check the metadata, to check if that title is correct, if the pages are correct, everything is is uh, is correct, because ultimately at the end, this is what you're going to your uh, use in your um, uh, Word document. And if the data which was entered into the uh, citation software like Zotero uh, will show on your paper uh, as incorrect. So it's 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 up to you to correct all the mistake, uh, mistakes uh, um, which will, may appear um, when you are automatically bringing citations. And there are some questions. Oh, shoot. Okay, someone is saying, Emily uh, is saying that in Mendeley, you can actually open the PDF in the software itself and highlight within there. Is that possible uh, in Zotero or does it uh, only uh, open it as a PDF in Adobe? Um, I believe it only opens it. Uh, Mendeley has the backing of Elsevier, so they've got some really cool features. Um, I don't know how to do that in Zotero. It might be able to. I don't know that feature. Um, so I was playing with this uh, with uh, um, uh, some of the citation, and in the desktop version, uh, in the uh, right hand uh, side where um, right now, Tim, what we see on your screen is um, kind of like word uh, space with the, um, you see on the right hand side, that section. Yeah. Uh, can you refresh that? Because what, what I see on my, um, uh, I'm not sure what you're looking for. Okay, hold on a second. That is a PDF I dragged in, and it's okay. also here. Okay, okay. Uh, these are citations, so they look more like citations. Okay, so when you so when you are at that citation look, you see those tabs, notes, tags, and related. That's where you can um, actually annotate and add your information there. But I'm not sure if there is a way of. Um, uh, if there is an any way of uh, making uh, highlighting the PDF. Sorry, say that again, please. Is there a I way to highlight the PDF? Yeah, I'm not sure if there is a way of highlighting PDFs. So what we want to see is this. This is this is a better record than the one I just dragged and dropped. So this has the citation information, social media organization leveraging personal and collective knowledge processes. And if I go to the right, I see all of the citation information that I would expect to see. And below that, I see the full text. So this would be our PDF. And if I clicked under it, it would open up the PDF for me. So this is just a PDF. If I, if I really wanted to use it, I would go to Google's um, Scopus, Web of Science, any of those databases, and then just grab the citation information and merge those two records. Are we okay with this? Yeah. Okay. So what I was thinking is next we would go into Google Scholar, which is a database that all of us have access to, and we'll try bringing something in from Google Scholar into our Zotero account. Does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I am going to it's fun playing with Windows. Multiple windows. Windows for everyone. Um, the Zotero or the uh, Zoom information is covering up my bars. 
So this is Google Scholar. Anyone can access it from anywhere in the world. Um, just kind of drop it down for a quick second. And I'm going to grab back our Zotero online. So this is Zotero online. And what we want to do is go Sorry, Zotero desktop. So this is a Tarot desktop. My apologies. You want to go under tools and install browser connector. So this is going to give us the magic of going into the database, scraping the information that we want from the database and dumping it into our Zotero account. So under install browser connector, again, from the desktop version under tools, there's a couple of different browser connectors that we want. I'm just going to open this up again. One is the Zotero for Firefox, or if you have a different browser on the left-hand side, you can show those connectors. So if you don't currently have it installed, please install it. Installing this will make your life so much easier. Mm -hmm. You will see how easy it is to bring citations from uh, any database web page. Does anyone still need time to install that or are we good to continue? Good to continue for me. Okay. So there, oh yeah, someone is asking for a minute. Other Sorry. people are, someone is asking for just a minute to to uh, finish installing. We're going to give you some, also some um, uh, useful tips, how you can um, make your Google Scholar work for you um, by going to uh, set up uh, the connection with your preferred library. So we'll do it in a moment. So at the University of Waterloo, uh, we have Google Scholar listed as one of our databases. And the advantage of doing that is we can then embed the link to get to articles through there. So we call it our proxy link or our get it Waterloo link. So under the hamburger into the left hand side, and that's what those three vertical bars are called. I didn't name them, but I think it's a pretty cool name. If we click under that and then go to settings, And then library links under the left hand side. I see University of Waterloo get it at U Waterloo appearing here. If your institution has the get it set up, what you could do is type in the name of your institution here and search for it. And then if slash when it comes up here, you could click under it and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then of course you need to save it. Yeah. So retain save that. It. Sorry, would you mind to repeat that step? Mm -hmm. Certainly. So this is to get the get it at whatever your institution is, provided your institution has that software installed. On the left hand side top, we're going to go into the hamburger, which is the three vertical bars. Then we're going to go into the cog looking symbol, which is our settings. From there, we're going to go into in mine, it's the middle link, which is library links. From there, I'm going to type in University of Waterloo if it's not already appearing. This system knows that I'm affiliated with the University of Waterloo, which is why it did it for me automatically. After I see University of Waterloo here, I want to save that. So those of you who are affiliated with University of Waterloo, you are familiar with the um, link, get it at Waterloo, uh, which you, uh, 
probably saw whenever you were searching different databases. And that's how we ask our uh, users to, uh, so for example, if you're searching Scopus, if you're searching Web of Science, you see this uh, um, get it at Waterloo, which means that you can, uh, when you click on that, the system will start looking for that article for, um, for that publication, uh, whether University of Waterloo has a subscription to it. So the, uh, what Tim just did is to make the Google Scholar do the same. Could not, not everything on Google Scholar is freely available, as you know. Are we good to continue? Tim, yeah. can, you, can you clarify if an institution uh, is not affiliated with? Uh, um, okay, so we have a question. Does this mean that uh, with Zotero, we are automatically connected to Google Scholar? I'm not sure what you mean by connected. Let's continue. And then if the question is still outstanding, please ask it again. Is that fair? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for resilience and scholarly publishing. So I fire out my search in Google Scholar, and I'm sure you guys have done this a billion times. Because we went in and said we're affiliated with the University of Waterloo, we now have the get it at URLU link here. So if I downloaded one of these citations and it didn't automatically bring up our PDF or bring up our PDF for us, what I could do is click under the get it at Waterloo. It would then go through the University of Waterloo material and try and make the connection for us. So that's why we want to be doing that. And since we've now saved it, it should be there for the next time we hop in and play with Google Scholar. So some of these things look good to us. Um, should we bring some into Zotero? What do you think, Agnes? Yay, do this it. Tarot workshop. Yes, let's do that. So to do that, what we're going to do is the top right hand side of your page. I've got this thing that looks like a little folder and it says save to Zotero Google Scholar. So I'm going to click under that. Does everyone is able to see what what, what Tim just clicked on? Uh, this is the uh, it's hard to see sometimes on those small screens. So uh, Please let us know if you are difficult, uh, if you have difficulties finding this on your uh, on your screen. So top right, in my case, it's the third one over. Again, it's the save to Zotero Google Scholar. And then what it's doing is it's scraping the screen and grabbing all of the articles that it is seeing on the screen. Hold on a second, Tim, sorry to interrupt. So uh, Caitlin is saying she, uh, she doesn't have this folder on. Caitlin, did you install Zotero on your computer? Yes, I did. I didn't sync it though when it gave me the option to sync. So I wonder if that's maybe, maybe that's why. The, yeah. Okay. I'll try to fiddle with it and find yeah. it. You can go mm -hmm. ahead. I'll, I'll catch up. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I see that. I like it. That looks really cool. That looks interesting. Uh, just for fun, I'll grab this PDF thingy. Boom and boom. So I've selected them on the left-hand side. Usually if I was doing research, I'd be putting a lot more care into this. Um, and then I say, okay. I have a pop-up on the right-hand side saying, saving to my library. I don't want this material in the library. I want it in the training session for today. So it's now saving to training February 10th. And if you look closely as it completes, I probably shouldn't have grabbed quite so many, as it completes the action, what it does is it goes from gray to black. So I know that this is still going to take a little bit to do. Looks like managing for resilience is now done. I would suggest not grabbing quite as many because we're just kind of testing here. Okay, in the chat, I guess in, the, uh, in response to Caitlin about the folder, Emily is saying that you might also have to click on the three uh, circles if you have too many bookmarks. Um, thanks, Emily. I don't really, I don't actually have any bookmarks and I've now synced it, but when I click on the three dots, what am I clicking on? Emily, could you tell us what you mean by three circles? Yeah, so when, cause I have a lot of little bookmark like above where it says other bookmarks where you have your like 
your account thing and then there's those three little circles you should be able to click on it to be able to pull the zotero so that's already there it's like i personally have like mendeley honey like i have other uh little things that are already there so they took up too much space uh so yeah so i had to like add it in there uh by clicking on the little three circles because that's where it like holds all of that information for you mm -hmm. um so i was in there and then uh, like bookmarks or something like that within that area. And then I managed to uh, like pull it up. So that's there. So uh, Alyssa also is saying that uh, she had to click on the extension but extensions button to pin it. So that's okay. another option. So if you go under the hamburger on the right hand side of- um, Oh, you I'm know what? Firefox. I just got it. <laughs> Yay. Sorry guys. If that you works. open the Firefox Yay, remote, awesome. and then go down to add-ons, these are all of the add-ons. So in my case, I've only got the four add-ons. Uh, and if I didn't want all of them up right now, what I could do is just shut them off. But that's where the Zotero connector is in case you guys are lost. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, we also have a, a comment from uh, Aliu, uh, who first asked about those automatically connected to Google Scholar that he's fine with, uh, uh, he doesn't need to, our answer anymore. He would, uh, is withdrawing the question because I guess we, we answered it. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay, so, so that is Google Scholar. Um, I'm not sure what database would be next in line for you guys to be using. Agnes and I heard that you were interested in Cielo, um, Web of Science, Scopus. Scopus. And manual input. Scopus? Sure. I. Okay. So I, I just need to move stuff around. Do you want to do it and do you want me to jump I to Scopus? Hmm? I don't care. Do you want to do it? Sure, I can do it. I okay. would need to. So I'll stop sharing. Yes. And I will share the screen. Let me just. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. So those of you who are uh, uh, University of Water, affiliated with University of Waterloo, I hope in the past that you use University of Waterloo website. And uh, we recommend uh, uh, to get, uh, the easiest way to, we recommend to use, uh, to get to our um, databases is to go through quick links. So I'm going to go click on databases link. And here, um, uh, this page changed slightly since maybe you know you uh, you used it last time, um, and the way of finding Scopus or any other database here is either by subject, but database types, or just simply um, type here the name of the database you're um, looking for. You can also go and pick pick it up from the list of under the uh, the alphabet here. So let's go to Scopus. Um, and um, as you know, uh, we, because all the databases and, and the subscription-based uh, resources, uh, we have to uh, indicate that we are affiliated with University of Waterloo. So I'm going to click on uh, and uh, log in. And now I am in. OK. Um, and uh, let's let's search for <clears throat> um, climate change, which is a huge topic. And my search is far from perfect. Um, however, I would like some quick results. So that's what I'm going to enter. Uh, if you are not familiar with Scopus, this is a very powerful interdisciplinary uh, database, the biggest database other than Google Scholar. Um, uh, we have access to, 
and uh, we recommend it for uh, most of the subject areas. Um, and definitely you can find a lot of articles through Scopus related to environment um, um, uh, here. So, um, okay. Uh, so here are the results for climate change. And the first thing I want to do is as most databases, they sort the results by the um, newest article uh, and we want to change it to relevance. And now my articles are sorted by the relevance. And uh, I quickly examine them and decide, oh yeah, there's plenty, um, plenty articles I would like to uh, save into my, um, into my uh, Zotero database. So at that point, I would click on the Zotero folder here and pick any article I decided to uh, grab and then I click uh, OK. So it's asking me if I want to save it to the test um, um, uh, test folder. Uh, and as you can see, because, uh, Tim was showing showing us different fol uh, the new folder he created. I don't have that folder because in my library I have only test one test or test two. So let's, uh, for this uh, um, uh, session, I will save those articles in my test two folder. And uh, at this point, uh, click done. I can go to my Zotero. Um, web Zotero. Um, and now I can see those articles here. Any questions about that? Agnes, if you can explain uh, people who do not have access to University of Waterloo Library and uh, how they do this. Okay, so uh, if, if you don't have access to University of Waterloo Library, um, uh, resources. The question is whether the institution you are affiliated with has access to Scopus. If it doesn't, um, you would have to check what databases are uh, available through your institution. And uh, so maybe you have Web of Science, you can um, and uh, then you can check and see if Web of Science will give you those results. Uh, as uh, Tim mentioned, uh, and uh, it was re requested by Anna Carolina that uh, we also show you Cielo. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with what institutions are coming from and what, what subscriptions do you have? whether uh, maybe you don't have that many resources um, and databases available to you like we do. Uh, maybe Google Scholar is the only way um, and Cielo uh, is the only way, then I would stick with those. However, um, we are going to show you in, um, in a moment that maybe you know uh, when you work in groups, um, you will be able to view um, resources brought from other uh, by other members. Um, so it's 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 because it's all subscription based, I cannot tell you what's available to you. You would have to check with your librarian if you have one. Also, um, uh, if you don't have a librarian, maybe talk to the library or um, I don't know what 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 uh, is is there many people who don't have access to Scopus? But can or, people do a, a general search on Scopus uh, using keywords and then uh, bring those uh, search uh, items, uh, selected items to their Jotaro library? Like, uh, yes. Without, without going through the institution, you know, so. so 
um, Scopus is a subscription-based uh, uh, database. So if if you if you don't have a subscription to it, um, you won't be. So it, so it, one thing is to have subscription to Scopus. Another thing is to, uh, to have subscription to actual, let's say, journal the articles are coming from. So we do, we do have subscription to Scopus. But if we do not have subscription to the individual journal, uh, we also uh, won't have access to the articles from that journal. So it's, it can be tricky and kind of working around. Um, any ideas, Tim, how? Agnes, maybe we should switch to Cielo uh, because everyone has access to that. Okay. Do you have it on? I can bring it up pretty quick. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. Okay. So we're going to, uh, uh, from what we learned, uh, and thank you to you guys, uh, we didn't know about Cielo, and I think we, I hope we are uh, pronouncing it correctly. Um, uh, and we, this is the new resource we discover thanks to you. So uh, as far as we understand, it's uh, it's open uh, it ha uh, it's open access. So anyone in the world can um, access and search it and view it. Um, um, Agnes, you have to give up the screen. Okay. Please. How stop share? Sorry. Um, we can also use uh, Google Scholar as an example. Yes, that's. That's correct. Okay. Okay. There is fourteen chats out of here, and let me move that out of here and share. Can you now see my Cielo search? Yes. Okay. I, I can see it. So just a quick search for scholarly publishing, and I tell it to search. Okay, Tim, I don't know if you monitor the ch uh, chat. Uh, there is quite quite a number of comments and do we want to address them now or later? Um, what are they, please? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just so I can see the chat. Okay, so Emily is saying that uh, she likes the Water Libraries database. Um, uh, she finds uh, Scopus way too confusing. Okay, Emily, talk to us later. We'll convince you that Scopus is better. <laughs> uh, it gives you more power, but um, your preference is valid and whatever you feel like is working for you, perfect. Uh, but if you are open to uh, learn more, uh, talk to us um, after this session. Um, okay, how people without access to water library can do, uh, do it through Scopus. Uh, as I said, it's uh, subscription based. So if your institution doesn't have access to it, um, it would be hard to, to use it. Um, Okay, someone is saying, hi, uh, I know if we can create folders groups in the desktop version, or we need uh, doing to do the same in online version, folders to store articles under the different topics. Sorry, I may have missed this. Is Was this mentioned before? Um, you can do it on the desktop version as well. And um, Emily is saying that the new collection button uh, with the little folder around the top of the left um, and uh, sync and refresh. So I'm on the desktop version. The sync button is right here. Okay. Also, someone is saying that the, the, their institute uh, does not show up in the Google uh, Scholar, uh, Google Scholar uh, library link search. Talk to your librarian at your institution. Um, and if need be, what we can do is get your librarian in touch with the people from our library that made that happen. And um, we should hopefully be able to do it. I can't guarantee it because I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your library is. But the University of Waterloo, I believe, had to take action in order to get that to work. And it's some scripting behind the scenes in our tech department. 
Okay, uh, and uh, Tim, Anna Carolina is saying that it's uh, probably uh, better to go to Google Scholar, but we already went to Google Scholar. That's why we wanted to show Cielo as well. Yep. Uh, is there any and, need to go back to Google Scholar? Or are we okay? And if anyone, if anyone wants to, us to repeat Google Scholar, we are happy to do it. We also, uh, uh, if you need time to practice, tell us, and uh, we'll give give you more time to practice because that was the intention to also, you know, let you let you play with this. Okay, let's let's do Cielo and. Uh, We'll continue with with this. So I'm 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 looking at the uh, time and uh, it's seven fifty here. So we still have hour and ten minutes. Uh, we st still have some uh, topics to cover. And when we have uh, um, uh, time left, you can play with um, you know uh, with uh, with uh, Zotero and ask any questions you have. Tim, go ahead. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just quickly hop back into my desktop version. And what I'm going to be doing is um, creating a sub collection. I'm going to call it SCIELO. Just so when the material comes in, we can kind of see the difference between the material that was brought in from our Google Scholar search versus our CLO search. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. So I'm going to move my Google desk or my Google desktop, my Zotero desktop out of the way. So I'm now back in Cielo. I've done a search for scholarly publishing. I see the results that have come up. And I have my little folder symbol top right. So I'm going to save to Zotero. I click under it and it offers us a whole pile of items. And I'm just going to grab the one, two, three top ones, tell it OK. It says saving to Cielo. So it's going to dump into that sub collection that I just created. I'm just going to wait until it goes from gray to black. And that way I know that it's done importing. Okay, so it's now went from gray to black and then disappeared. So now when I go back into my Zotero desktop, in my Cielo folder, I see attitudes to open review among stakeholders of a scholarly. So that is the first item that I brought in. And if I click under the left hand side, I've got this little arrow. So I'm in the folder, I click on the left hand side, I see that it's also brought in the PDF as well as a snapshot. And it's done that for all of these items. Are there any questions on that? There is a question, but I'm not sure if it's this related. Uh, from Caitlin, do you have to be logged into your email over Google to have it sync to the online version? I don't think I'm you have- I'm not logged into Google? Yeah. I'm logged into my Zotero account online and I have my Zotero desktop open. Okay. Thanks. I'm uh, I don't know what it is. I've downloaded and undownloaded a couple of times, but it's not showing up in my desktop version. Only my uh, sorry, it shows up in my desktop version, not my online version. Um so I'm sure. maybe going to just try a different browser. Okay. If you go into my library, it will show everything that is in your account. So potentially when you did the download, um, excuse me one second. <coughs> when you did the download in the top right, you dumped it into my library as opposed to the subfolders. That would be my guess. Yes, I, I didn't have subfolders, so I just put everything in my library, but even in my library, it doesn't show up in the Zotero online version. Okay, if that's happening, um, click under the refresh button in your online Zotero account and it should show up. Just the web refresh? 
yeah, refresh the screen. The screen doesn't yeah. automatically refresh, so you need to do that every now and then, I think. It still isn't there, but that's okay. I'm, I'm just going to try a different web browser and hopefully it'll pop up. In what like browser Firefox. are you using, may I ask? Are you using Firefox? I'm in Chrome. Okay. And you download the Chrome, obviously you download the Chrome plugin? Extension, yeah. Okay. Um, and did if you... This continues, we'll troubleshoot after the session. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So the nice thing about the Cielo database is we can also bring stuff in through bib text files. So what I'm going to do is just grab some bib text files uh, because I think that's another cool way to import stuff. So if for some weird reason you can't get the import export or you're bringing material in from a different database that will only allow the bib text, we can do that also. So what I'm going to do is I'm back in my Cielo database. I'm just going to grab some of these items. So to grab them, what I'm going to do is click under the little box on the left-hand side. Then I'm going to go up to the top of the screen where it says export. I'm going to tell it that I want it to come out in bib text format. I tell it to export. It then says open with notepad and I'm okay with that. When I open it with notepad, I get this. So this is the bib text format. It's telling me that it's an article, the title of the article, the journal of the the journal name and all of the citation information I want. I'm going to go control A to select all of the text and then control C to copy it. I'm now going to go into my Zotero desktop. I'm going to go under file top left hand side. I'm going to go down to the third from the bottom, which is import from clipboard. And I see that I've been able to import four items, and these are the four items that I brought in through the bib text format. So the items I brought in through the Zotero Cielo interface brought in the PDFs. This one does not have the PDF. So if I've got something that doesn't have the PDF, what I can do is click under it. So this is a right click and then find available PDF. And it will try and search and see whether or not it can make a nice, easy connection to that PDF. I'll just give this a couple minutes to process it. Oh, it's working hard. Thank you. It is working long. hard. <laughs> I would expect a fairly oh. An Some. OK success rate. So CHE putting the failed. Probably because when it brought it in, it brought in some yuck in the title. So it wasn't the best. So this is a perfect example. Uh, the citation was brought uh, from, the uh, from the database, but you see there are some mistakes at this point. Uh, that's causing some problems with bringing PDFs, as well as it may cause you a problem when you're working with, uh, with Word, uh, actually working on your document uh, in Word. So this is a perfect opportunity now to fix that problem. And we're going to show that you. now. Okay. I'm sure. Close this. So putting the something or other statement and if I look back to my bib text, it brought it in really badly. So putting the something or other statement on ethical research, I see the right from the, the first, it was terrible. So I'm going to go into my Zotero database. I see that it's yucky. So what I'm going to do is modify that. I'm not sure exactly what this should be. So let's go case. back to let's go back to Cielo and see the title. Do you remember? Oh, the, quotation marks. Quotation marks. It didn't okay. like quotation marks. Okay. So I'm going back to my Zotero desktop and I'm going to modify this. 
Human Statement with Research Practices. So as you can see, this is super easy to fix um, uh, any mistakes in your Zotero database. If you spot anything, you could you can just simply click on the uh, uh, on the title on or any other field and fix it. Okay, so like, Tim, what what did you do then now? I clicked on it and it looks like it's just giving me the full text of the article as opposed to oh, there's our PDF. So this is another. But, Hold on a sec, Agnes. So mm -hmm. I found the PDF online. So it's putting the statement on ethical research and scholarly publishing practices into practice. And now my save to Zotero isn't that cool little folder. It's save to Zotero PDF. So if I click under that, I would expect it to save the PDF for me. Okay. So to recapture what Tim so just did. PDF. Remember when when we uh, when we um, downloaded this citation from Cielo, it brought just citation, not a PDF um, attached to it. Then we tried by the right click to automatically bring the um, PDF because there was a mistake. Uh, automatic kind of. Uh, it didn't bring the citation uh, title title of the article properly. Um, it it was the system was not able to find the PDF. However, when we fixed that, and when Tim actually went uh, back to that article and found that PDF, um, the um, the uh, Zotero connector appeared on the screen uh, as a um, uh, in the top right hand corner and he uh, clicked on on that PDF article uh, icon there and the article now is in your Zotero database. So if one way, this is just, you know, uh, a note to remember if there is, if one way doesn't work to bring the article, there is another way you could try to bring the uh, PDF into the Zotero database. So need to know whether or not um, our participants are interested in playing with Web of Science and other databases. Most of them seem to work the same way where you go into the database and you tell it save to Zotero and it should bring up the list of the articles and you should be able to bring them in fairly cleanly. We've also shown you how to do things through Bibtex, if if that is a better method for you. Are there so, any other methods that you guys are interested in in bringing material into your Zotero account? Tim, something came up in the chat, but I can't see what it is. Uh, it, it, it's a response to uh, the previous uh, previous comment about bringing uh, PDFs. Uh, um, Tim, would you mind showing how to manually enter information? So let's say you have a book or print book, um, or you have a printout of the article and you would like to enter it to the database. I would strongly suggest that you find it somewhere electronically so you don't need to type it in. Um, I'm not the best typer in the world, but I'll show you guys how to do that in case that's a method that you need to do. So I'm on the Zotero desktop and under the little green plus it's new item. You need to tell the system, is it a book, a book section, a document, a journal article or more and we'll give you a, a citation material for a whole bunch of different things. If it's a journal article, um, this is the journal article title. Oops. Um, the author, last name is Ireland. Um, the first name is, oops, come on. You are into uh, one field, switch to two fields. 
Yeah. No. So Timothy Ireland, and if it was no longer Timothy Ireland, I could click into the negative and get rid of it. If, it, if there's additional author fields, I would click into the plus and then we could just keep adding author fields. Uh, if, you, abstract. if I could just say one thing. So you saw that when Tim was clicking on that box on the right hand next to his uh, name, uh, there's a way of switching between two fields and one field. So in case uh, if you have a person as the author, uh, you need two fields for the name and the uh, first name and last name. But if you have an institution, so um, I don't know, if the University of Water Library published something, uh, let's say, you know, uh, you wanted to, to enter or any institution, that's uh, you would you would switch to one field. And I'm not going to fill in all this information, yeah. but you could if you wanted. There is uh, so so this is the manually entered. As Tim said, if you have a print copy of something, and you, um, uh, and you'd like to enter it, the easiest and uh, we like efficiency. Um, Tim and I we worked uh, for. Um, on many on many workshops and presentations, and we always tell students um, here: if you have something in print, so let's say the professor gave you a book and say, "Yeah, you need to include that in your bibliography." Um, find that that book in the catalog. Find that book. Find this article in uh, through the uh, database, and then make uh, make it uh, uh, enter that automatically so that saves you all the typing. Uh, another way of uh, entering um, citations into your Zotero database is by this magic wand there Tim is showing right now. So if you have ISBN of, uh, of a book, if you have DOI um, uh, PubMed uh, ID, you can use them to um, to enter that into your citation uh, into Zotero. So I'm just quickly jumping into PubMed to grab a PMID. Okay. Well, I also tried that with um, uh, ISBNs and it worked perfect. So I'm in PubMed. Um, yeah, I could just dump this into my Zotero database, which is what I would probably do. But here's the PMID. I think you just need a number. Um, again, the. Uh, my apologies on this. The Zoom meeting information keeps covering up my Zotero information. Um, where was I? Oh, okay. So I'm not sure if I need the PMID, the word, or the abbreviation or not. I think it's, we'll oh yeah. Oh. It seemed to like it. Okay. Are there any other databases that we haven't covered that you guys are interested in seeing now? Can you please put that in the chat? If not, we're going to continue on to groups and sharing of information. Um, when we showed you how to create various folders, and we know that you are working on various projects and maybe, you know, in different groups, think about how you can, um, um, how you can, what kind of folders you can create, maybe by the date, by the project, by the country. Um, that will make your life much easier. And Tim is going to show you. Um, how to create groups. 
and that's really where um, um, something you you probably will um, find very useful. So I'm in my online Zotero account, and I see in my library the various items that are in here, uh, my various folders, my training folder, my publications. I also have group libraries. So these are online libraries that are being shared. To find groups, what we can do is click under groups. So right now I'm in my web library. What we want to do is switch to groups. So currently I'm in the ANTH N190 2021 spring group. And I also have created the UW library group. What I would suggest you do is create a new group for the affiliation that you guys are currently belonging to. So it's uh, V2V. Uh, what you can do is create a V2V group and then you can have it public with open membership. So anyone can view your group online and join the group instantly. You can do closed. So anyone can view your group online, but members must apply or be invited or a private membership. So you need to basically be invited. And what I would suggest you do is initially have it public open membership so that everyone can join it on their own. And then I would suggest closing it down and then doing some sharing of material if you guys would like. Are there any questions on that? Tim, do you want to show uh, the process and maybe invite Certainly me? I'm and going to call this a V to V test. Uh, and I'm going to call it web. The reason I'm calling it something bizarre like this is I think you're going to want to create a group for the V2V affiliation. And I don't want to take up the V2V name. So I'm <laughs> leaving it for you to play with. I have so a um, comment on that. We already please? have a um, group for V2V. And within that group, we have folders for each country. Oh, Perfect. fantastic. So you guys are already set up. Yes, thank you. And do you have do you have it open uh, to anyone or how, no, how did not, you manage that? It's not open, but Simar sent instructions on the email how to uh, get included in that group. And also, is it V two V countries or V two V global partnership? It's V two V countries. Okay, so yeah, you pop in the name, and there it is. And I see that only members can view and edit, and it's perfect a membership. So if I wanted to join, I could join and then whoever is the owner slash moderator would have to approve that application. Okay. I can. Excellent. I, can I didn't know you guys would be this far ahead on that. Well done. <laughs> um, so the next thing that we wanted to show you is playing with Word. Unless there's any other questions at this point in time. Sometimes uh, when we were playing with uh, groups, sometimes uh, so um, one of us was adding articles and uh, in order again to view, sometimes you have to refresh or sync your um, uh, database in order to view uh, what's in uh, what's in there because. Uh, um, you know, it was not showing right away. So play with that if you have uh, issues. Oops, come back. Okay. So what I'm doing is opening up Word here. And the reason I'm doing it like this is, again, because the Zoom covers up the top of my screen. So I just want to be able to see it. Okay, we have a question from Emily. Is there a way to go back in Zotero? For instance, yesterday while uh, looking at citations, I accidentally deleted an author's name and could not get it back. If you still have the title, you can search for that article. Um, so that would be the easy cheating way. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the easiest is to import it again and then combine your two records. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, she says, yeah. 
So if you merge the two records, so import it again, merge the two records and you should be good. Okay, so we're in Word. I've got the Zotero installed. Uh, this is where, whoops, where I would like to cite something. Click under Zotero. I need to add or edit a citation. First thing it asks is what citation style are you going to be playing with? And as a psychology librarian at the University of Waterloo, I like the American Psychological Association, specifically the seventh edition. So I'm going to say APA 7. I'm okay with that. I now have this red bar hop up. And what I like to do is the classic view. So that will allow me to open up my Zotero database. And I've got my various folders here. If I wanted to cite something from our, one of our group libraries, I could do that. So I want to cite this and I say, okay. So it's input, uh, it's input the citation in the APA format. Uh, this is another one. Go back, add edit citation. Again, I like that classic view. But this time it's coming from multiple sources. Often when we're reading material, the same idea or thought is in more than one location. So it was in this one. So I'm going to highlight it and then the little green arrow moves it to the right. And it was also in that one. Again, little green arrow to move to the right and I can just keep adding them if I wish. I say OK, and there they are. This one is a quote, and usually in APA, we don't include page numbers, but if it's a direct quote, we need to, or if it's a specific reference to a table. So I'm going to say classic view, and I'm going to use this one. And it says page, and it was on page 67. And I say, OK, and get the page 67 there. When we're done, what we have to do is add the bibliography. So it's going to be add, edit bibliography, top left hand side, second one over. And there's our bibliography for us. Are there any questions on that? Do you mind showing uh, maybe entering a reference where their title is messed up and you need to go back and clean it? Certainly. Does anyone see anything wrong with the items that it's cited here? So this is the title of the article and in APA 7, we want this to be lowercase. It brought it in in uppercase, we want it to be lowercase. So what I'm going to do is move my article off the screen and then bring in my Zotero on or a desktop version. So that was the statement on ethical research. There is from the bottom. So yeah. here it is. So this should not have been capitalized. And the reason Tim is going back to the uh, um, the original uh, entry in Zotero um, is you could fix that uh, title in your um, bibliography in your Word document, but every time you refresh that document or you know do anything save save it, it will go back to the uh, um, incorrect. Um, incorrect uh, way it was entered into the original uh, original citation in your uh, Zotero database. So it's important at this point to actually go back when you spot any mistakes, to go back to your Zotero database, fix it where it sits, because you might be using the same citation later uh, and you want to be it correct there. So you don't have to um, fix it every time and, and worry about it, that it will 
uh, refresh and 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 be incorrect. Go ahead, do it. So I've changed it in my database. I now tell it to refresh, and it fixes it for me here. If for some weird reason we don't want it in APA anymore, we want it in a different citation style, we can dynamically say, give it to us in a different citation style, and it will automatically change it for us. I'm just going to jump back to APA because I think that's what you guys are generally using. So Anna Carolina just asked how to change the style if all citation uh, citations after the text is completed and the reference list added. So Tim just showed it. You go to document preferences. document preferences. So let's say you finished and you you uh you need a different citation because maybe you know this article you just wrote uh one journal wants one citation another journal wants you to to provide a different citation this is the oh. easiest way Are there any questions on that? Okay. Another fun thing about this dot or this citation software is the tags. So let's grab something that hopefully has some tags. So when this item attitudes to open peer review among whatever was brought into my database, it assigned these tags to it. If I've got an additional tags, such as perhaps Canada, oops, I could add that tag. Now Canada is a tag. Just, I'm just going to get rid of this good text thing because it's looking a little annoying. To see my tags, they're on the bottom left-hand side of my um, screen. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And if I wanted to search within my database and see everything that mentions COVID-19, I could click under the tag and it would do the search and bring back the material that's related to that specific tag. And you can have fun with it. You can assign colors to various tags. You can rename them. You can delete them. And I think this might be very useful for your group also. Is there you anything else that you guys were hoping to get out of this session? I have one more question from Please. Alberta, uh, but before I read that question, if you could go back to that uh, uh, and click on any of the titles uh, where you were in the, you, when you were showing tags. Okay, so there are tags there are, and there are also notes. So if you choose to enter uh, any notes uh, for yourself or maybe when you're working with groups um, and you want someone to um, pay attention or do something regarding one or the other entry, you can, you can uh, yeah, make those notes here. And uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so any questions on that? Think about your questions and you can post them into the chat. We have a question from Alberta. Apart from PDFs, does Zotero work with uh, news articles from websites as well? Yes, it does. So, um, Tim, do you want to maybe find some news article and we can... You can also, uh, not only news, you can, you can um, uh, save... Uh, Websites, you can save emails. Um, what would you yours? suggest to go for your new site? Um, I know of a couple of databases, but they're going to be closed to University of Waterloo. Um, just do CBC. I've never tried doing this before, so this should be fun. So it wants yeah. to do a web page with a snapshot. Oh, Kim's convenience is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
those of you who don't who didn't see Kim's Convenience, it's really funny. I love that show. Okay. So let's say you want to save this article. Similarly to any other articles, you click on that icon there. Kind of curious about what it's going to bring us down. So this is what it brought in. It called it a web page. Uh, it gave us a title. The author information is a little messed up. We'll have to fix it. Um, and that author information is very messed up. And then it looks like our full text. Mm -hmm. So it brought in some of the information, but it would definitely need cleaning up. So does that answer your question, Alberta? Any other questions related to what you can bring, how you can bring? Just another fun thing. Um, so this is a group, online group library. And if I had something in my library that I want to dump into it, it's just a drag and drop. I'm not sure why it's not showing up there. Try a different one. Oops, come back. Is my online beast. I'm not sure why it's not happy. Can you see it, Agnes? Um, what are... In the UW library? UW, on my UW library? Oh, there um, it is. Okay. Yeah. It just took a second to come through. So someone, Emily, is asking if uh, that Zotero is not showing on Word for her. Uh, could it be because she has Mendeley installed? It shouldn't be an issue because we have installed RefWorks and Zotero. I don't know, Tim, do you have Mendeley as well on your word? And it's I showing? Do. Yep. So it, this shouldn't be an issue. Maybe um, going under edit and then preferences. Um, and then word processors. And you might need to reinstall the word add in. Because of the weird security my computer is under from the university, um, I have to do this often. And then I usually need to shut stuff down and bring it back up. Okay, um, so that covers this. We have from Alyssa, uh, when I try to add a citation on Word using the plugin, it says Word could not communicate with Zotero. Please ensure that Zotero is open and try again. Uh, Alyssa, do you have uh, the desktop version open? Because uh, I- Yes, yeah, thank you. Because I think that might be a reason. Tim, any suggestions? What I find is if you're bringing into situations like that, and I hate to say it, shut down everything and bring everything back up. And it solves more issues than it should. But we had, when we, Tim and I, when we practice and, and uh, there were situations where it would not uh, automatically do what we were asking it to do and then we discovered oh wait 
the desktop version, <laughs> I just closed it. So let's open again and try it again. Um, that also might be a, um, a reason. Uh, also, um, those of you who did not go um, um, set up sync version, uh, sync uh, option um, in the tools. Uh, I think that was covered in the video originally. Uh, that's a good idea to do it because the sync um, will do uh, will up, uh, um, do by itself. You don't have to click click on syncing a web version with a desktop version as often. So uh, hey, I'll you, be back in just a second. Yeah, if you haven't done that, I think that's a uh, that's also a um, um, good idea to do it. Um, Do you have, do you have, do you want us to cover anything else? Do you have any other questions? Um, have you had a chance to play along as we were showing this? Um, like, I think we, uh, at this point, we kind of covered all, all the points we were hoping to cover. Uh, However, we are here to answer your questions as well as show maybe show other things if you have um, interest and if you if you want us to go and um, and show other things uh, in in this database. So um, yeah, take take your time, play play a lot, uh, play a little bit with this and and see. If there is any any other issues and questions you have for us, I hope and I hope Tim will be back soon because uh, he's sharing his screen and I cannot do anything about it. Agnes, I can stop sharing the screen if you would like to share. Oh, it, it it it's it's all right. Just, okay. I think he's coming back. Okay, sounds good. Hi. There you go. <laughs> it's all right. Were there any outstanding questions? That's what I, I was I was just saying, yeah. I realized it was 8.30 and I had to get my daughter up for school. <laughs> I think that's pretty much what we wanted to cover. If there's nothing else, um, if you do have outstanding questions later, please feel free to get in touch with Agnes. And I think that's pretty much it then. There, there is a question. Um, it says, can we add the downloaded PDFs? I don't understand the question. Can we add them? I think it's. Um, I think they're talking about adding um, PDFs from desktop from your own computer to um, to the library. It's it's one of the earlier things you showed, I believe. Yeah, maybe someone was late. So could you repeat that, Tim? Show how we did it. So we're adding a PDF to an item that we have in our database. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Because I'm also interpreting that as how to add a PDF to your group library, and I'm not sure. I think it's going to have to do with your privileges and whether or not you can do that. So there are two two kind of components. You are in charge of your own library, and you can add PDFs to your own library, um, and. Um, so PDFs from, let's say you have a PDF safe on your, on your computer. So Tim can show you that. There is also adding PDFs to the um, citations you brought from various sources. And then adding PDFs to the group libraries or your folders within the group. 
So if you, Tim, could you kind of recap all these? Sure. So um, also I noticed that I've got, does social media increase labor productivity and does social media increase labor productivity? I might've added a tag to one of these. So what I want to do is just merge those items. So if I was looking for, oops, sorry, too fast on the clicking. First thing I would do is find available PDF this way because it requires absolutely no thought. <laughs> It failed, so I'm going to close that. I'm going to click under it twice, which opens it up online. And what it did is it grabbed the DOI and you currently have no access to view or download this content. So I don't have access through it. It would have grabbed all of my University of Waterloo proxy bits and it's not going to let me into this. If I wanted a copy of this, what I would do is go through my interlibrary loan process. They would get me a copy of this and send it to me. I'm not sure how well that works at your institution, but that's what I would do at this point in time. Um, I'm just quickly looking because most of these already, or many of these already have PDFs. Can you redo the PDF from the desktop again? Sorry, I'm on my desktop. Okay, but did you show oh, how- Oh, bringing to... a PDF in? Y yes, sorry. yes, sorry, sorry. So- I know what you're saying there. So Tim is going to show you uh, how- a PDF that I've grabbed from my desktop and I'm just going to bring it in here. And here it is. So looking at it, oops, the information is lousy. What I would probably want to do is um, get the citation information and then merge it into here. Not sure if it's going to do this for me nicely or not. I didn't quite find it. It's kind of a, a draft PDF that that one was. Um, I think I have another PDF yep. right there. So grab. And drop. So there it is. So, uh, are you clear on bringing PDFs? Because there are some other questions we want to address. Yes, we can move on to other questions. Okay, yeah, okay. So, um, there is a question. Can you also kindly repeat how to have Zotero added into the Word document? So when you download Zotero, it should pop it in. Um, it should pop it in here. Uh, if it doesn't, what you can do is go into so it's a tarot desktop, isn't it? Under the Zotero desktop under edit and then preferences. And then word processors, you can tell it to install the Microsoft Word add-in. If that still doesn't do it, um, I had some difficulties in that. The computer that I'm using is locked down security wise and I had to talk to our IT people to give me permission to do that because they'd locked Zotero out of the programs and plugins that I could use. They didn't do it intentionally. They didn't find Zotero as harmful, but what they did is they said, only these plugins will work and they just had to make an exception for Zotero. So I'm not sure how your computer is, but that might be something that you would have to take up with your IT people. Okay. 
So another question is, can we get the recorded version of this webinar, Anna, uh, Anna Carolina? Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, the reason why we were recording it so people can review it later. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, is it possible to get those instructions to join the V2V group again? I'm not seeing it in my email. Yes, we can send the information again on how to access the group. And once you're in that group, um, the group administrator can send out a message to you and then have you just click under join and then you can join it. Or you can search for the group um, like we did. I'm just gonna bring that up again. So if you are in your online Zotero and here's my library, what I can do is go under groups and then I can search for groups. And I can say VTV. And I believe this is the group that you guys are sharing. So if I click under VTV yes. countries, um, there it is. And I think I already requested permission to join, which is why it's not showing up here. Oh, thank you to whoever I, I, let me in. <laughs> so after you do that and your request to join, this is what you should be seeing. So it's all the, the different countries are already set up. Well done, whoever did this. Looks great. So is there information in any of these yet? Not yet. So about that, this is for the situational analysis. So each country can use those folders to record the literature that you're using for the situational analysis. Yeah, okay. So because I now have access to that, um, if I was in Word playing around, um, I'm just going to tell it to create a new document just so it's not confusing. Um, this is something from another country. I could tell it to go into Zotero. Anna, can you throw something into one of those folders? Imar, can I ask your help with that? Yes, I can. I can add. Um, Thanks. Just a second. Because this is where the software really shines and it shows how powerful it is. I'm going to say um, add, edit, bleh, add edit. It says what citation style do you want? I'm saying APA. So now I should be able to go into the classic view. And it did not sync up yet. Okay, so let me cancel that. When Agnes and I were playing with this, we found that it took about a day for group stuff to come into play, but I'm wondering if it's not coming into play because I didn't sync. So I'm back into my Zotero desktop. I'm going to tell it to sync and we'll see whether or not that. Um, yep, here's our V2V countries. So if you don't sync your online and your desktop, you're not going to be seeing them. So Sinking, sinking, sinking is kind of the key to this. So I'm going to get rid of my Zotero desktop. This is something from another country. Add edit. My little red bar comes up. I want to see it in the classic view. Those countries are now appearing. Um, did you put something into one of these? Sorry, just a second. Sure. Because the fun thing is once we start sharing those citations online, everyone with access to the group library can cite it. I'm not seeing anything in them yet. That's fine. Do you remember how to do it? Yes, I've added it to the Indonesia folder. And I'm not seeing it. So why am I not seeing it? I have to sync. We have to sync it. Brilliant. 
Um, so I am going to go back into my Zotero BSD. Here it is, Indonesia, it's not there. I tell it to sync. There, there it you is. go. So now, um, there it is, and I'm in my ad citation. I'm just gonna jump out of this and jump back in. This is something from another country, add edit citation. My little bar comes up, I like the classic view. I'm going to go into Indonesia because there's something in there. There it is and say, okay, and there she be. So I would think that um, potentially this item would need to be cleaned up a bit. It's not looking like a journal article. I'm not sure exactly what this is. But Sorry, it was, the, it was a web page. I've added another one if you want to try again. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so here's my Zotero Beastie. We're playing with Indonesia still. This is my web version. Yep, that looks more like a article or something that we expect to see. I'm popping into my, come on. So this is my desktop version. I don't see it. So what I have to do is sync it. There it is. I say, go away. I'm just going to move this out of the way. So this should work. Added a citation, my fun little bar, classic view. I want to go into Indonesia. I see it there. No, it's the first one. Yeah. There it is. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that would be what I would expect to see. And if I need to, I can pop in the bibliography in there for papers. And of course, I'd want to clean up my title a bit. Something else that we noticed and we didn't quite finish. Oh, actually it's in Agnes's database. If you're importing from Scopus, what it's doing is, is it's adding the word Scopus as a database down here in APA. And the current rules under APA say, if the database is a common database, meaning lots of institutions have access to it, not all, a lot, uh, such as Scopus, Web of Science, um, PubMed, you don't need to list the database. If it's a proprietary database, such as ACM, then you would list it because not everyone has access to it. It's a, it's a very specialized database. So that is something that you'd want to keep an eye on also. Google Scholar also brings that information. I can dump sub article into UW library group, which I'm in and Tim is also in, so you can show it. Sure, uh, let's do that. Okay, so I'm just putting. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to get rid of that. Didn't save it. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to hop back into Word and just to not be confusing, I'm going to create a blank document. So blah, blah, blah. I need to cite See. something from the one that Agnes just popped the citation into. Go to the yeah, UW Zotero add UW. citation. Okay. Take a seven. It's not. Come on. And then add cool little bar, classic view. Go to UW library, library. and uh, pick a study of the distribution. Uh, nope, sorry. Um, what about, okay, uh, show me what else do you have. Can you sync your? I was gonna say, does, any, does anyone know what I didn't do? And yes, I didn't sync it. Yeah. I'm intentional to see if we can pick it up. So here we are, uh, UW library, those are the items. That's still left over by Word. What I need to do is sync it. I was thinking, which one did you dump in Agnes? Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let's uh, pick the attitudes uh, to open peer review. Yeah. Which one I've got to call? Doesn't matter. The first one. Sorry. Um, let me hop into my Zotero desktop. I'm not 
make sure where my is there is my Zotero desktop. So this one. Yeah. So as you can see in the description uh, on the right hand, it says library catalog Cielo. Um, and that's what Tim was saying that it brings um, that information which database it's coming from and you don't need that in in AP so you can clean that up. Um, okay, so let's hop into So as you, you can see actually how quickly I was able to move my uh, references from my library to the group UW library we both have access to. So the article originally, Tim didn't have it in his own uh, database. I, I moved uh, the article from my library um, to the group folder and he's able to cite that article. What happened there is I didn't tell it what citation style, which is why we had that weird coding sneak in. Okay. I kind of bypassed this step, I think. Oops. Oh, my multiple screens are annoying me right now. Classic view, I want the UW library. I wanted the top one, tell it okay. And there it is. And I create my bibliography. Now it looks clean. Mm -hmm. so okay. Clean. We also had a question and I think I answered it, but I, I'm not sure. Someone was asking, uh, how do they delete a group they accidentally created one by mistake? Um, so if you are in your um, web version, you, Tim, you, you created UW library group. So maybe you could show how would you uh, delete that. Uh, it's, I believe it's under group settings. Yeah, and then on the right-hand side, uh, site, there is a deleted group. So if you created a group and you don't want this anymore, uh, you only the owner who created a group can delete that. So I, because Tim created UW library, I couldn't delete that, but he could. So again, you go into it and then it's group settings and then it's delete group. And if I deleted this, because Agnes is also in it, it would transfer ownership to Agnes. Just because there's two of us in it. But if you are the only one who created it and the only one who, who uses it, um, then no one else will see that message and be affected. Okay. They got it. Great, perfect. Any other questions you have for us? We have 10, 10 minutes left. Um, so if there's any other outstanding questions you, you want us to answer, please let us know. Okay, someone is saying that they got their problem solved. Yay. Thanks, Tim. I needed to manually opt for the Zotero ad in Microsoft Word after downloading the uh, ad in the Zotero and voila. Perfect. Another thing that happens to me often is um, when I open up my Word, again, based on the security, I have a um, do you want to enable things. And until I push the yes to enable, this isn't here. So it, it, there's a lot of weird security things that are going to be annoying, but once you get them worked out, it should work nicely for you. Again, if you have ongoing issues, just fire Agnes a message and, and we'll get it straightened out for you. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so for the, for the group member rights, it says you, it can either be a member admin um, or your 
Um, yeah, those are the two options. So for admin, do they have the capacity to add more members? Is that is that what admin does? Yes. So um, when you initially set it up, there's one admin and then you can make additional people admins. You can only have one owner, but I believe you can have as many admins as you want. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. So that would be member settings. And then I could kick out Agnes, which would be bad, <laughs> or make her an admin. And she's now admin. You can send out invitations to people. Again, I think it would probably be easier for you if you found the group online, but it's up to you however you want to increase your membership. Hey, we have a question. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt. Are you, you finished? your sentence Tim? okay is it possible to import citations from mendeley directly to zotero i believe so do you know so what more? you would want to do is go into mendeley and tell it to export as okay hold on one sec let me show you some of your options instead so i'm on the zotero desktop what you can do is import from clipboard or import from about pop up Bid text, RIS, Zotero, RDF, or whatever. So you would have to export stuff from your Mendeley database and then import it through the file through here if you wanted. So we are going towards the end of the, of the training. If Agnes and Timothy want to add anything, uh, we we didn't say one one thing, or maybe we we did, and I forgot uh, that we said it. That there is a limit, uh, space limit with Zotero. It's a free version up to three hundred megabytes. So if you are on your online version of Zotero and you click under Upgrade Storage it'll break it down for you. Currently, um, I have a quota of 300 megabytes. It will never expire. Uh, my current usage is 79.2 megabytes. So I'm at about 26% of the capacity of this database. When it exceeds 300, then I would have to pay 20 bucks a year for up to two gigabyte or 60 bucks a year for six gigabyte or 120 bucks a year for unlimited. So for the heavy users, this might be an issue, although um, I don't know how big an issue. That would be yeah, the, we, we have uh, purchased space uh, as part of uh, the V2B uh, global partnership. So space is, will not be an issue for anyone. Oh, wonderful. So, okay, Glad see, we that. didn't know that. <laughs> so that's great. So you, ha you, you don't have to worry about space. Great sorry, news. Just to clarify, um, the member, it, we won't take up the member's storage, correct? If they're part of a group, it's the group owner's storage that would be taken up. I believe so, because it would be material that would be, be yes. within the My Library. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, Agnes and Timothy, thank you so much. This was a wonderful training. I have learned a lot personally. That was very hands-on, very interesting, very informative. Thank you so much. Thank you and, for mm -hmm. inviting us. Yes, this was great. Mm -hmm. You have all the <laughs> information about that that can help us in the project. I'm sure it will help a lot. So we want. We also wanted to say that if you have any questions, um, um, we are here to, um, to help you as much as we can. We also want to say that uh, all the people who are affiliated with University of Waterloo, if you um, have any other questions, uh, resource related, whether, you know, uh, you want something to find in the library? Do not know, don't know where to go for it. Make sure you uh, you contact us because we are here for you. Um, and um, you know, if if there is something we don't have access to, uh, we can um, 
try to get it through interlibrary loan. And the same speaks to all uh, your institutions. If you are at other institutions, uh, make sure you talk to your librarians if there is, uh, if you need any help with the uh, bringing resources, uh, finding resources. Thank you so much. Sounds Thank good. You. Um, I just want to quickly say if everyone can start their videos, we can take a quick picture and thank um, Timothy and Agnes for their time and for accommodating an early time as well. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fun part, getting up early. Uh, if someone can tell us what time zones are you guys coming from, that would be what, also what cool What countries for are you us. guys in? We're, yeah, we're kind of that would be cool to know. <laughs> Feel free to unmute yourself and say yeah, it's you 11 p.m. Japan. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. <laughs> yes. Konbanwa. Yes. Thank you so much. Ten p.m. Malaysia in the chat. Wow. <laughs> You 7 guys... p.m. India. Sorry? 7.30 p.m. India. Okay. Bangladesh, 8 p.m. 2 p.m. Ghana. 3 p.m. Nigeria. This is so cool. We've never done it, Tim, like that with people oh, from. Oh, oh, this is fun. This is, this is amazing. We are going to tell our colleagues what <laughs> that we met all of you. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> Hi, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It was great. The training was very. It was great. Thank you a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Let us know Bye. if you have other questions. No more question. I will uh, just uh, practice, you know, so uh, gradually it will, uh, it will come. <laughs> yeah, it seems it's, like a if you really... get stuck, don't get frustrated. Reach out to us. We're here to help you guys. Yeah, Thank we you. all, yeah. Sorry, go what ahead. Is it? What are you saying? If you get stuck on anything, if something doesn't work the way that we just showed you, get in touch with us. Don't get frustrated. It's probably something tiny. And once you do it a couple of times, it becomes so much easier. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we, always tell, we always tell our students, uh, you know, uh, if you have problem with something, when you are trying to fix it and you reach the point that you think that, hey, I've, I've, I spent some time on it uh, and I still cannot get anywhere, make sure you ask for help because that's the reason why we are here uh, to help you. And for someone who is new to it, um, new to maybe to doesn't know about this, some of the tricks and tips and, and resources, it, you might be spending way too much time trying to fix it where uh, maybe we have the answer right away. I'm not saying we have answers to everything, <laughs> but if we don't, we, have, we work with colleagues who might have those answers and uh, we work together. So if there is a question I don't know how to answer, I will reach out to Tim and he might be able to, to help me right away. Okay. So the same works for you. If, if you are struggling with something, make sure you ask for help. Yeah, the reason, it's the reason why I, 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 I tell myself it's a very difficult for time being to identify any uh, conference as far as I haven't yet practiced, you know, the system. I'm, uh, but don't worry about, I'm used to raise questions whenever I don't understand, I'm sure that I can, you know, rely on you to find out the answer. Thanks a lot for your proposal. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. And Agnes, yeah. thank you for introducing Tim, helping to introduce Tim at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. It was okay. 